Hey guys, so last lesson we were looking at water as a solvent, so being able to dissolve other other substances. And this time will be this lesson will be focusing on ionic compounds and how the interactions between um, the different forces can dissolve uh, ionic compounds into water. An example of an ionic compound is sodium chloride. So it's a lattice stru crystal structure of positively charged uh, sodium ions and negatively charged chlorine ion ions. And then this can dissolve in water and then the crystal structure will break up and be interspersed between the water molecules. So when it's dissolved in water, sodium chloride crystals dissociate into water and this is an important physical change. So a physical change will be from a solid to a liquid state. In distilled water, that's once that you've evaporated all the water and then recondensed it, so there should be nothing but water molecules in it, it does not conduct any electricity. So if we put electrodes in, there should be no charge, uh, no, no electric current, and therefore the light shouldn't turn on. But if we add sodium chloride crystals, uh, oh sorry, if we had sodium chloride crystals on their own and put electrodes on it, same thing wouldn't like would happen. We won't get the light on, and that would be an indication that there's no electrical current. But when we put sodium chloride into water, let it dissolve and form a solution, we find that it does collect, conduct electricity. So when we put the electrodes in uh, with the battery on, the the light will turn on because there's a continual current uh, occurring. So the current flow implies that there's movements of charged particles. Uh, so ions and electrical conduction uh, is a change that is caused by the dissociation of sodium and chloride into water. So when we have water and we put the electrode on, like we said before, nothing happens. So there's no charge movement. But if we put ele electrodes onto a sodium crystal, sodium chloride crystal, again, we don't see any charge movement and therefore we won't get the light turning on, so no current. But when we put the... Uh, sodium chloride into the water, let it dissociate and dissolve, it forms ions, so positively charged uh, sodium ions and negatively charged chlorine ions, they disperse into the water and when we put electrodes in it, they can move through the water towards the electrodes and then provide us with a current. So in aqueous solution, so one to, uh, solutions of water, uh, sodium chloride, the positive sodium and the negative chloride can move and conduct electricity. A substance such as sodium chloride conducts a current when dissolved in water, it's called an electrolyte. So other things that do the same, uh, have the same properties, so when you put them in water it dissolves and then you can have current going through it, is also called an electrolyte. An, uh, an ionic compound dissolves um, in water and each ion is becomes solvated. So this is a process where uh, one of them will dissociate and then we'll have water molecules surrounding it. Uh, this term is hydration in the case of water because water molecules are surrounding each ion. But if it's not water molecules, then we'll just say it's solvated. Uh, so the dissociation process of a substance into water can be written in a chemical equation. So here we have the sodium chloride in the solid form because denoted by the S in italics in the brackets. And then when we add the water, there's no chemical reaction, so that's why we can put the water over the arrow. Sodium will become in aqueous solution as an ion. And remember before in the previous lesson, we were saying aqueous solutions have a little aq. And the chloride atoms, uh, chloride atoms will have a little aq as well. So really this means is that we have a solid sodium chloride uh, crystal. We put it in the water, it dissociates and becomes a sodium chloride solution. The process in which oppositely charged ions separate from each other is what happens in this case. So the chlorine ions are going to, chloride ions are going to separate from the sodium in the crystal structure uh, because it's going to interact with the water molecules. So each one is going to be surrounded by a water molecule or a couple of water molecules and then it can spread randomly in the solution. So Key features of solubility of ionic compounds are the most ionic compounds are soluble in water. So this is sodium chloride, which we just used in all of our examples, baking soda, Epsom salt, 
And these are all because polar molecules of water can attract the ionic charges in the lattice structure of these salts and therefore we can get an interaction and then breaking up of the crystal structure. So charged ions become solvated as they dissociate into the water. But not all salts can be uh, soluble, so some ionic compounds are insoluble. And it's due to the fact that electrostatic attraction between the positively charged uh, cation and the negatively charged anion are too strong and it's not enough to overcome the, the attraction to the water molecules. So in this case, uh, the, the salt or the ionic compound, the forces are really, really strong and the water molecules are trying to pull them away but they're not strong enough so it can stay in, um, in the crystal structure or and therefore it can't be dissolved in the water, which we see the yellow there. So ionic compounds are a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion, and when we put them in water, sometimes they can dissociate or undergo solvation or hydration if it's water. And when this happens, it's because the negatively charged uh, ions are being attracted to the positively charged parts of the water molecule, so the hydrogen sides, and then the negatively charged um, uh, ions are being, uh, the positively charged ions are being attracted to the negatively charged oxygen side of the molecule and this will pull them apart and spread it uniformly into the solution. But in this, in some cases this doesn't occur because the electrostatic attraction is too great. So we can look at some questions to s explain this. So which of the following substances would not dissociate in water? Calcium chloride, so calcium chloride dissociates in water to form calcium and chloride ions, um, so it's not correct. And then also magnesium sulfate also dissociates in water, so it's not correct. And it forms magnesium ions and sulfate ions. Group 1 elements, so in Na2SO4, and uh, sodium is in the group 1. So group 1 elements are always soluble in water and therefore it will dis this compound will dissociate in water to form sodium ions as well as sulfate ions. So C, chloride ions don't dissociate in water because there are covalent bonds between the chloride ions uh, because they form together to form the gas and uh, covalent bonds are much stronger than ionic bonds and they're also quite strong so the intermolecular forces are not enough to overcome it and break it up. So therefore, Cl2 won't dissociate in the water. So this one is the correct answer. <coughs> Question 7. What must be present in an aqueous solution for it to conduct an electric current? So remember, water is going to be the solvent in an aqueous solution. And if it's got nothing in it, it shouldn't conduct any electricity. So we need to add positive and negatively charged ions in there. And this is an electrolyte. The electrolytes can then move through the solution and then create a current. Question 8. Which of the following best represent a volume from the solution magnesium um, nit nitrate? So the Mg, there's one Mg uh, magnesium ion and then there's two sets of the NO3. So remember if it's in brackets there's a little two here so that means there's two sets of them for every one magnesium ion. So which of these would be the correct representation? A is not correct because the magnesium and nitrate ions should be in the form of 1 to 2 like we just said. Uh, but here it's 1 to 1 because there's two sets of each. In B it shows the ratio of 2 to 1, so two sets of magnesium to every one of the NO3. And that's not what we want, we want the other way around. D shows a ratio of 2 to 3 and we didn't want the, this ratio so it's not correct. And finally in C we see that there's two sets of magnesium ions and then four of the uh, NO3 and that's what we wanted because we wanted a ratio of 1 to 2 so therefore C is correct. Question 9. Draw a diagram to show the orientation of water molecules around the ions for an aqueous solution of potassium bromide. So here we see water pulling away a potassium and then a bromide. And so when this happens, the water will pull the uh, negatively charged oxygen will be attracted to the positively charged uh, potassium 
and they will surround it in, uh, with all the oxygens towards the potassium and pull it away. And then here we have the opposite uh, occurring. Bromide is negatively charged, so it's going to be attracted um, by the positively charged hydrogens. Question 10. Although most ionic substances are soluble in water, why are some still not soluble? So there's electric static attraction between ionic compounds, uh, ionic, uh, in ionic compounds. So uh, in this case, if the electrostatic uh, attraction is too great, so greater than ones that would occur between the water and the, the ionic compound, then we know that it's not going to be able to dissolve in water because it's too strong in between the, ion the, in the ionic compound. So water can't pull it away and therefore it'll form an, a little precipitate in it and we can see it as insoluble. So in ionic compounds, most of them can be soluble, especially group one. Uh, but however, and this is because the, the electrostatic uh, interactions of the ions can be overcome by water and they can pull them out of the crystal structure and then be dissolved in the water or, and form an aqueous solution. But in some cases, uh, the ionic compounds are, have too great an electrostatic attraction, so therefore it can't form insoluble, insoluble compounds. Thank you.